Hi, my name is Paul Royer, and today I'd like to take a few minutes of your time to show you how to set up your first API in Dataflex using Thrifly. Now, I'm assuming you're already familiar with Thrifly and that you've already installed Thrifly Developer and activated your developer license. If that's not the case, pause this video and go over to docs.thrifly.io and click on the developer section on the left hand side. Once you've followed those first few steps and you have your developer license activated, come back here and we'll continue. Now you'll notice I have a brand new install of Dataflex 2016. So the first thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is set up a new workspace. So I'm gonna to go to File, New Workspace, Next, and I'm gonna call mine Thriftly How To. I'm gonna hit Enter a few times, and we're not gonna worry about a database for now, and finish. There we go, we have a new workspace ready to go. Now Thriftly includes some really useful tools, including some templates that we can use to get started on our new server project. So before I do anything, I want to import my Thriftly library. So I'm gonna come up here to Tools, Maintain Libraries, and Add Library. If I go over to my Documents folder, I should see a Thriftly developer folder. So I'm gonna open that. I'm gonna to go to Dataflex, Library, and the file I want is this Thriftly lib. So I'm gonna select that and hit Open. It's gonna ask me a question here about relative versus absolute pathing. So I'm gonna choose relative pathing by clicking yes and okay. And our library is ready to go. So let's test that out by going to create a project. And sure enough, we have a brand new project type right here called Thriftly API project. So let's select that and hit okay. And we're gonna call this file server. Since we're creating an API, server sounds good. There we go. And there we go, we generated our server.src. It's set up a few packages that we need here, including our Thriftly package. Notice we are not using the web app package. And also notice we have this othrifly object. This is where we're going to define our API and the services that are available for that API. So the first thing I wanna do is uh, I'm gonna include a little function here for some basic error handling. So I'm going to copy and paste that. So you can see here it's a basic function, thriftly ws error. It takes a string called error message and a variant called retval and it returns a variant. And all it does is trigger an operator error with the message that we passed and then it returns that retval variant. And then down here is where we define which services are going to be available in our API. It has an example here called my service. We're gonna get rid of that one and we're gonna create one called string service dot pkg. And we're gonna define that in a separate class file. So the last thing we wanna notice here is this send start server of othrifly. That's just letting Dataflex know to go ahead and start our server. But before we do that, before we run this, we need to define string service.pkg. So to do that, we're gonna come up here and go to File, New, and this time we're gonna to go to Class. And we should see a uh, Thriftly API service template available, so we're gonna choose that one and hit OK. It's ask us for the name. This is where we're gonna say string service and hit Enter. And it's going to generate that string service.pkg for us. It's going to use the C Thriftly service package for us. And it's going to give us a skeleton example of a service object. So just like before, we're going to re replace this uh, my service with O string service. And this right here is actually really important. So I'm going to read this little comment. It says, PS service name is the published name of this service. If you do not set a service name, the object name minus the leading O will be used as your service name. So if you don't include this line of code, it's going to give your service name this name minus the O at the beginning. And it's important that you name every service um, because Thriftly supports multiple services under one endpoint, and the service name actually becomes part of the URL. So we have to include it. Whether you 
name it or not, we're going to name it for you based on the object name. So let's go ahead and name it ourselves here, string service. And then it gives us an example of a function. This function right here is actually defining an API call because right here you'll notice published equals true. That is what tells Thriftly to make this an API call. But I'm not going to use this example. I've created my own. So I'm going to copy and paste that for you here. There we go. So again, this meta tag right here, published equals true, says that this function right here is an API call. I want this to be published as part of my API. So you may have other functions like private functions or variables or things in here um, that won't be published unless you put this published equals true tag before it. So we're defining an API call here called join strings. It takes two strings, S1 and S2, and it returns a string. Uh, first thing we do is trim off any uh, trailing white space. And then right here is where we take advantage of that error handler we defined. So the first thing I do is I check to see if string one is an empty string. If it is, I throw my thriftly WS error and I give it a message of string one must be defined. And I do the same thing here with string two. So if either one of these strings are empty, I'm going to call that error function. I'm going to throw an error with this message in it. If we get past these two checks, all this function does is concatenate those two strings together with a space in the middle. So there we go. We just defined our first API call in our string service. So let's save that and let's run this. Let's run this server and see what happens. So if I hit run, you'll notice it's going to bring up this Thriftly developer window with some options in it. So we've got a couple transport options framed in HTTP. We've got some protocol options, Thrift Binary, Thrift Compact, JSON RPC, SOAP, and JSON REST. Now, we actually support multiple protocols at the same time using a header, but if you choose a protocol here, this is what we're going to see in our documentation and our test interface and all that. So we're going to choose JSON RPC for now. And under encoding, we've got two options, UTF-8 and ANSI. And then when you run this for the first time, you'll probably notice that this enable gateway is not going to be checked. That's because you can run Thriftly locally. If you just want to do testing on your own machine or on an internal network, you can choose a port and you can start up the server and you can make some test calls. However, today we want to show off our gateway feature. So we're going to check the enable gateway box. And you'll notice you get an option here that says gateway region. If you're running this on the live server, you're going to see a couple different options here. You might see Brazil or Texas, Japan. We actually set up servers that are localized throughout the world. Hopefully you find one near you that you can connect to and all of your gateway uh, traffic will be proxied through that server so that you get the best performance possible. So you're going to want to choose the gateway that's closest to you. In my case, I'm running off of our staging server, so I only have one option. So I'm going to stick with that one. So let's start this server and see what happens. Click Start Thriftly. And it's going to bring up a web browser here with some automatically generated documentation telling us all about the server that is running live right now. So we just started our own API based off of maybe 20, 30 lines of Dataflex code and nothing more. Uh, that's pretty awesome. So right here, let's take a look at what we've got. We've got our service that we defined, our string service. And right here, we give you the address. This is the actual API address that you would publish for your developers to be able to access this API, this service. So we actually give you a little copy button there to make your life easy. And let's click on it. Let's see what we've got. Here we go. We've got some more automatically generated documentation that's giving us some additional details about our API, including our calls. So we created our join strings call. And you'll notice, so let's take a look. Right here we have S1 and S2 and returns a string. And sure enough, parameters S1 and S2 and it returns a string. So let's test our API call. If we click Test API, you'll be brought to our test interface. 
And right here you have a little drop down where you can choose which method you want to test. In this case we only have one, so let's test our join strings method. So I want to say let's join two strings. And I'm going to send that off. And sure enough, we see a JSON RPC call and response here. Let's join two strings. It was concatenated with a space in the middle just as we defined it in our code. And let's test our error handler. So let's pass it an empty string and see what happens. And sure enough, we get our error message that we defined. String one must be defined. And because we chose JSON RPC, it gave us this nice error um, object, which follows all the uh, JSON RPC standards, including an error code, a message, and a data object. And inside this data object, you'll also notice we include the call stack. So that might come in handy. So there we go. We have an API up and running just like that. Now let's add one more function call to this just to see how that looks. First, let's stop our server. Just so you can see that that was running off of that local Thriftly instance. If I try and refresh this now that it's stopped, sure enough, there's a 404 error. So let's add one more function call. I have one already ready to go. Again, notice here the published equals true. So I'm telling Thriftly that this is another API call that I want to publish. This one's called two upper. It takes one parameter called string one. And again, I'm going to trim that string and I'm going to check to make sure that it's not empty. And then as long as I've got a valid string, I'm going to return the uppercase version of that string. So let's run it. Here's our developer window again. I'm going to say start thriftly. Here's our API definition again. Let's click string service. And there we go. We have a brand new API call to upper. Takes one parameter called string one, returns a string, and let's test it. Let's see if it does what we told it to. So from this method drop down, we're going to choose to upper as the method we want to test. And I'm going to say, make me uppercase. There we go. So that's pretty exciting. In just a few minutes, we were able to define an API and create a few calls. Um, we can also create multiple services just by creating another PKG file and including that in our source. This is just scratching the surface. In fact, if you want to see a more thorough example, in the Thriftly developer installation, there is a pretty lengthy example with database access and all that stuff. Make sure you check that out. Um, we have some error handling in there and all that as well. And we will be bringing out more videos in the future showing some of the more powerful features of Thriftly, but we wanted to get this uh, intro video out there in the hands of Dataflex users so they could get started. So have fun.